In this tutorial, we will be introducing the idea of variables in Scratch. Variables are containers where you save useful information. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. We will create a variable, and I'm going to create a variable for a couple of types of information that would be typical. The first type of information is text information. So that's anything you can type with your keyboard. In this case, I'm going to ask for the user's name. And so I could name that variable any way I want to. Scratch is very flexible in this regard, but we don't actually want all that flexibility. So we could create a variable that's something along the lines of give me your name, user. That's an awful variable name. And what we want to do in Scratch or in any programming language is, first of all, we want to keep it a little bit shorter than that. We want to eliminate all spaces because some programming environments don't deal well with spaces or don't allow variables with spaces. And we want to get rid of all those extra words. So if we're asking the user for their name, a much better name for this variable would be username. But we don't like spaces, so we're actually going to get rid of username and replace it with underscore name. That's an improvement, and that's actually OK for a variable. But a more conventional name would have capital N-A-M-E. So this first word has a lowercase u. That's the word user. The second word starts with an uppercase. That's the letter N in name. You can also add numbers. We could have username 01, username 02, etc. if we were naming multiple users. So I go ahead and create that variable. As soon as I do that, notice that a whole bunch of extra icons show up under the variable menu and on our uh, action area we've got the variable username has appeared and it's got a value of zero and so the first thing we're going to do is well okay how can we change that value so the way we do that and this is the command you're going to use the most is the set username or set any variable I can choose whatever variable I like except for in this case I only have one variable so username is my only option so set my username I'm going to be egotistical and set it to my own name for now and notice that by doing that I haven't actually changed the variable this is the instruction to change the variable but nothing happens until this instruction is actually executed now we could go ahead and double click on it and that will execute the instruction or we could make it part of a program and nice to put a beginning and an end on that and now I'm going to change that to something different and now I will run the program and notice by running the program it sets the username to this new value now there's a number of things that I might want to keep track of username is one of them this is a collection of characters that's known as a string so a collection of characters, anything you can type into the keyboard. I'm also going to create a variable for the user's age. So user age would be a pretty normal choice for that. And I'll create a variable for the um, user address. Notice that there's some consistency there. These are things I'm getting from the user. So I'm getting direct input from the user. Whenever possible, I want to name my variables so that anybody who's reading my program should be able to tell immediately what that variable is being used for. So in this case I'm going to set my user, well in this case I'm not going to set user address, I'm going to set user age next. I'm going to put that into my program and then I am going to set user address, that's the last one I did so it's in there by default. So user age, typical student maybe 16, user address, we'll just put in the address of our it's actually not even the address of our school, but it's close enough. Notice in this last one, a little bit more room, notice that I have spaces in here. There's nothing wrong with that. A string, a string variable, can have spaces. A space is simply a character that you push on the keyboard, just like characters, letters of the alphabet, numbers along the top. So now that I've done that, if I run this, and actually that's just for the sake of interest, let's change that. Uh, change that variable to something else new name and when I run it so here we go I've got a new name I have a new age and I have a new user address and all of those things have been saved now 
this is not a very typical way. Yes, sometimes you're going to want to actually set variables directly in your program like this, but we also, especially when we have variables like username, user age, user address, we're also going to want to ask the user for some information. So to wrap up this tutorial, why don't we go ahead and ask the user some questions and let them fill in these values instead of me putting them in for them. When you put in values like this, when you put in values that are predefined, sometimes that's referred to hard coding the value because you're not giving the user the option to set them, you're setting them for them. So I'm gonna, instead I'm gonna ask, I don't want to say things, I want to ask things, so I go into the sensing menu and I'm gonna ask three questions. And the three questions I'm gonna ask, probably pretty obvious, I'm gonna ask what's your name, so I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm going to ask what's your age, and I'm going to ask what's your address. Now whenever you ask a question in Scratch, there's actually a variable that already exists in Scratch, and it's kind of like a, a temporary variable that can be used for pretty much anything that the user would type in, and it gets this generic name called answer. So first of all, let's not name any of our variables answer. We have to avoid this one because Scratch is already using it, and we don't want to have that confusion. So when I ask the user their name, then I need to do something with that answer. For example, in the case of the name, I'm actually where I where I typed something in before, I'm actually going to put the user's answer. Now if I do that just across the board here, answer and answer, you're going to see the result. Probably you can anticipate what this result will be. When it asks, what is your name? I'll put in a new name and hit enter. Because I tried to use answer, I tried to use this temporary variable answer in three different locations, every single one of my variables got filled with the answer Philip. And that's definitely not what I was planning. What I wanted to do was actually get a different value for the name and the age and the address. And so if I I'm going to ask Alice what her name is. She answers 15, and now user age has changed. And what is your address? I'll put in 321 Sum Street. That's where we get into the looks menu, which I pulled up mistakenly before, where I'm going to actually basically parrot back the answers. I'm going to repeat their answers back to them. And I could do a nicer job than this, but that's not the point of this tutorial. So really all I'm going to do is then every two seconds I'm going to tell them one of the pieces of information that they told me. So the first thing I'm going to tell them, go back to variables, I will tell them what their name was and I'm going to say that for two seconds. I'm going to tell them what their age is. I'll say that for two seconds. And I'm going to tell them what their address is. And by doing this, this way the user at least finds out whether or not they've given us any unexpected information. So I go ahead and I ask, what's your name? And I'm going to put in a name, ask what the age is. This is someone older, I guess and ask what their address is, 444 Ottawa Way. And that has changed it. Then I tell them their name is Harvey, their age is 25, and their address is 444 Ottawa Way. So there's an introduction to variables, how you create them, how you use them, 
how to get input from the user, and how to give some basic feedback to the user about the answers they've given you.